In my previous video, I went over the process of setting up the EK1 Mini 2 Plus. This included setting up an account on Sixth Elements website, performing a firmware update, going over all the functions of the unit, and loading the boot patch file onto the car. Since I wasn't ready to begin tuning at the time of my first video, I'm going to begin where I left off, which was writing the boot file and tuning the car. In the Sixth tuning software, you can purchase pre-made tunes or request custom tunes. If you want a different company to tune your car, that is an option as well. You'll need to contact that company directly and they will send you a tuning file or files. I chose to go with N75 Motorsports. The process was simple. I purchased the tune from N75 Motorsports' website. You have an option to purchase additional revisions. I did not choose this option since I had no plans to add additional performance parts. If you do plan to purchase the tune and build upon your existing modifications, I would recommend purchasing the revisions. You are given a large discount for purchasing the revisions at the time of purchasing the tune. After I made my purchase, I sent an email to N75's tuning email address. In this email, they requested I provide the following. ECU ID, EK1 serial number, the car's VIN number, my order number, and a list of the vehicle's current performance modifications. After submitting my email, I received a timely response from Daniel at N75. He provided me with two tune files. One was an OEM file, and the other was a stage one file to use as a starting point for the tuning process. He also provided me with information on how to load the file onto the car using the EK-1, what to expect while loading the files, and which gauges he needed to see while I was data logging. Since I had the boot patch file loaded onto the EK-1, I just needed to transfer the two tuning files onto the EK-1 to begin tuning. I took the EK-1's SD card and plugged it into my computer. I opened up my email and found the two attached files N75 sent me. I downloaded each file to my computer. I went to my computer's files and opened up my download file folder. I then dragged and dropped those two files into the EK-1's map folder. Once done, you should have four items in the maps folder. The boot file, boot instructions, OEM map, and stage one map. After you have loaded the files onto the SD card, eject the SD card reader and place the SD card back in the EK-1. If you plan to keep the EK-1 in your car at all times, then you'll need to install a wire into the fuse that powers an accessory that doesn't have constant power. An example would be windshield wipers or USB accessory port. I would suggest using a fuse tap over pushing the wire under the fuse. I will have a link to the one that I purchased in the video description. It's a similar wire adapter used to hardwire a dash camera. The wire kit that I purchased was a universal kit, so it came with all different types of fuse sizes. I chose this larger kit versus just buying the wire that I needed because I was able to get this kit for the price of what one or two wires would cost. This wire is easy to install. You will crimp the wire onto the blue wire coming out of the EK-1. Then you will take out the fuse from the location of the fuse box, place that in the lower fuse holder, and then you will place the fuse that is going to go to the EK-1 on the top. After connecting the wire, I wrap the wire in Tessa tape. Plug the EK-1 into your car's OBD2 port. Do not start the car. Instead, put the car in accessory mode by tapping the ignition button twice. On the EK-1, select Power Mode, then Writing ECU. You'll get a Responsibility message. Select Enter. You will get a reminder to install the SD card. Select Enter. When prompted, select the boot patch file instead of a tune file. It will read the file first, then begin installing it. Do not turn off the car or unplug the EK-1. Allow the process to finish without interruption. You will see the instrument gauge light up and go through lots of different screens. Also, you will hear the fan kick on and it will be quite loud. Make sure the car's battery has a good charge or is hooked up to a charging unit. This file will take approximately 13 minutes to finish. 
Once the boot file has finished installing, you'll get a message prompting you to turn off the ignition and click the EK1's enter button. You will perform the same process to write the tune to your car. Select power mode, then write ECU, enter, then enter again, and finally stage one tune file. This file will take less than two minutes to complete. Once the stage one file has been loaded onto your car, it's time to log the data required to dial in your tune. N75 requires the following gauges to properly tune your vehicle. RPM, boost, ignition timing, air fuel ratio, throttle response, accelerator position, and wastegate duty. To save the requested gauges on the EK1, go to Gauges, User Mode Item Settings, then select the specific gauges needed by highlighting and selecting Enter on each of the gauges you want to use. The EK1 will number the gauges to show which ones have been selected. After all the gauges have been selected, you're ready to begin data logging your runs. To do this, find a road that you can safely drive the car from approximately 20 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour in third gear. You will put the car in third gear and run the car from 2 to 3,000 RPMs all the way to redline. For DCT owners, you will need to put the car in manual mode. Also, be sure to have the car in its sportiest settings, in mode. You can do two runs like this to get the required data needed. Once done, take out the SD card, plug it back into your computer, drag and drop the files onto an email back to N75. The files will be reviewed. After they've been reviewed, adjustments will be made and a new file will be sent back to you. This may repeat a few times depending on how your car is performing. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content.